This coverage is brought to you by Rami Rent. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to some more disc golf media coverage. We're coming at you with the fourth stop on the European Pro Tour. Got the MPO Round 3 Front 9 Lead Card Action. I'm Tony Farrow. And with him, Connor Wood, excited. The stage has been set with stage two, round two rather, in the books. We have the final deciding round. One of these men will be crowned your 2022 Estonian Open champion. I'm excited to see this finish. It has been a battle the entire way. These guys, I'm sure, are not going to let up on this show. And a beautiful course, a great playing ground too. Beside your champion here, we see the current leader, Lauri Lettinen, averaging 10 down per round, sitting at 20 under. He has been on fire since the start. And next up, right behind him, is Hena Rudna, out of Estonia, 999 rating. Kid's on his way up here. Joining us, of course, Niklas Antila, playing really well right now, recent finish at fourth place at the European Open not too long ago. He has been performing exquisitely on the international and European stage. No doubt. And a face we have certainly seen before, Rasmus Metzama, also 999 out of Estonia. Kid's got some game, got that good forehand. And home country for him. As we take a look at the current leaderboards, Lowry in the lead at 20 under with a two-stroke lead over Henar and Nicholas at 18 under with Rasmus at 16 tied with Jesse. There are a bunch of people still contending for those podium spots with 18 holes left. Let's see who can manage to take these spots down. Well, let's kick it off with hole number one. Got a par three, 85 meters, island hole. Most of the guys here are probably going to go dead straight up the middle. You can take that big spike hyzer if you choose. Either way, land it inside those white stakes. Otherwise, you will be in the hazard area playing from your lie with a one-stroke penalty. A tricky hole to get us started. I have been a fan of seeing the forehand decision here, ending right of that circle away from the guardian tree has been the best shots that we've seen as Lowry takes the tee to get us started here final round MPO lead card I'm sure there's a bit of nerves <laughs> looking like he wants to go straight down the middle nice little hyzer release there super safe flight and he just curls that up right by the base gets a little hop skip Great, great throw. Good throw. Solid start from Lowry. And here we get the first look at Henard. I haven't seen much of his game. Yeah, neither have I. This is a, uh, a new face for me as well, but scores have certainly shown he has got some game. Looks like he's also lining up to go right down the middle. But looking for a little bit more flip. Starting on the left side, he doesn't quite get it over, but seems to have fallen off that tree. And within the circle, he'll have that familiar obstructed putt. Yeah, that tree seems to be the missed spot. Keeps you safe, gives you an obstructed putt, but a putt nonetheless inside that island. Let's see how Niklas takes this out. And it does seem very forgiving with the hazard circle to just hit something and drop. Seems like very rarely are they getting pushed out. Let's see if Niklas can match Lowry's angle a little bit more on the right side where you have an unobstructed putt. A little low release. Get some skips hopefully. Oh yeah. Nestles up about four meters from the basket. Solid drive from Niklas. All right, last but not least, Rasmus. Also looking to be going backhand up the middle. Maybe a sinus? 
as he goes through his routine. First shot, final round, lead card. Definitely you want to get your mind right as you move into this important round. As he fires straight down the pipe, slides it up nicely inbound. Oh! oh that Excuse was me, short. that looks like it was getting enough ground play, but he must have come just shy of He's that OB stake. He's right on the stake. That oh. looked even like almost a circle one putt, and he... Oh, yeah, look at him. He's just right in front of that stake. Unfortunate slam down. Keep him on the OB. As we see, I believe that was Henar from underneath the tree with his obstructed putt for birdie. We see our leader now to set the pace for round three. Getting it started like he always does. Right over the rim. Lowry's in for his first birdie of the round. And we do have a little bit more wind today than yesterday, but scoring conditions still very nice. Very mild weather as Nicholas puts in that birdie as well. Matching him, keeping his two-stroke gap. Nicholas, I'm sure, will be chasing every birdie he can at this point. Absolutely. Final day, it's all or nothing. If you're leading if you're not leading the card, you better be pushing. Henar up for his par. Well done by him to put it in. And do you think the mindset is maybe perhaps slightly different between Lowry and Nicholas, whereas Nicholas can go full aggression? Do you think Lowry is trying to just play a controlled game, or is he just trying to run away with it? Mm, in the beginning of the round, I think it's just stick to your game plan, push, 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 get some birdies. And as it starts to come to the finish, you know where you might want to watch where you're at. <laughs> Let's kick it into hole two. We got a far 312 meters. Again, tunnel shot off the tee. Gotta miss these trees right through here. In between them is the preferred route. You can go wide, but you gotta keep yourself on the inside of those tree lines on the right side as well. As we come into the green, control the angle of the disc. Don't get too much skips on this hard packed non-grass filled green watch that OB on the left side it's real tight by the basket so we see Lowry up first lining up the hyzer line that neon yellow disc tough to see but seems like he did filter through nicely has a good placement there right in the middle of the fairway but well short of the green yeah I must have caught caught up on something on the right side fairway he should be able to get up and down for par from there, though. That does open the door for Nicholas here. If he is able to get one right up there for a birdie putt, could be a significant shift of momentum as he gets all of the ground play in the world. Uh, yeah. I believe that was all right. <laughs> Very nicely done from Nicholas. Smelling the blood, taking a quick stroke on Lowry with that beautiful park job. I like that you used the term smelling the blood and in the background was Oscari slapping mosquitoes off him. <laughs> <laughs> we see Rasmus now coming to the tee. It looked like Henard did connect with an early guardian, didn't quite get the distance or the flight that he wanted. With Niklas showing them the line, we'll see Rasmus try to match here. That looks like a good line, needs some skips. Yeah, I just caught a, some grass on the fairway. Left him a little short, but seems to be a circle two look. I think just a tad more height on the release and he would have made it all the way. A very nice line there. I would agree. There's not much grass on the fairway, but there is enough in the right spots to stop your disc if you don't get enough carry. As we see Henar here where they forehand Anheuser scramble shot off the knee he doesn't get the fade that he wants a little bit too much angle to pan out at the end and get the full flight he's going to be left with a long look at par yeah tough spot and now we see Lowry up for his look yeah nice easy jump putt layup 
Don't do anything crazy in the beginning. Just keep it under control. This is Henar now to save Par. This would be huge. Ah, oh, little right side catches the last guardian tree. Super demanding shot, low ceiling, everything in the way. As we see Rasmus with a long look, just a little bit low, but does connect with metal. Always in high spirits, though. Always a smile on his face. And we see Henar going again here to save his bogey. Niklas has not yet even thrown his second. As Henar puts it in. A little bit sweaty on that right side basket there, but does fall in nicely. Definitely had a little meat on the bone for that bogey, but handles it very well. And Niklas finally up for his birdie putt. Just outside the bullseye. What a throw off the tee, especially with him playing after Lowry. He knew he had the opportunity, and he took that chance. As Lowry will be tapping this in for par. Yeah, we haven't seen too many birdies on this hole. This is a, a definite bonus. Requires some really significant leftwards play after going around the corner. I think the ground play the determining factor there. Oh, yeah. Well, let's get into another tough birdie. Hole three, par three, 146 meters. Got that tight gap off the tee. A slightly tight gap as we move into the open, open fairway. Righty backhand's going to need to flip something up, get some soft Anheuser carry, and then bring it back over, landing nice and flat on this grass. Don't want to flare skip as the OB tightens up as you get to the basket. Really cool hole. I love it with the OB left, but the hyzer forehand with an overstaple disc really being what you want to throw requires you to have a lot of touch and accuracy with a very fast disc. Nicholas up first. We'll see that flip up to flat and maybe turn over even a little bit. Oh, or, turn or, over a lot of bit. Ouch. Oh, as he also lands himself OB there. If you were watching around two, he'll have a very similar spot to what Hjalta had, still about 70 meters. Obstructed look as well. Lowry up next. Good hyzer flip. Oh, he also <laughs> rotated too much. And OB. Wow, between the two men in first and second. Holy cow. Rasmus licking his chops now. There's got to be some headwind out there that they're not feeling. Yeah, Rasmus doing the smart play. Just, okay, I'm going to lay that up. I'll take my three, guys. Good luck throwing that one in. I'll take that stroke all day. We'll see if Henar wants to go for the birdie or also opts for that placement shot. Oh, he's look like he's pushing a bit, but this is hyzering out hard. It needs to get down. And it's safe. It's close, but it's safe. As we see Rasmus up first with his hyzer off the tee, we see just another little chip hyzer approach and parked. It's a solid move right here. There's a chip, chip, take your par. You're not losing anything on this hole. Gets a solid five from the caddy. That's a game plan all day. No doubt. Niklas up next. Looking like he took his full meter off the OB line, opened up his angle nicely, and he also places one right underneath. That will net him the bogey with the OB stroke. Lowry looking to do the same. Justice in hand. Little skip and a park job. I was going to say that looks wide, and then you said justice and everything. It Click all together. Came clear again. We see Henar now. Closest of the bunch off the tee. Oh, wow. wow. Almost throws it in just a, a few centimeters higher, and that was oh, in the man, chains. Oh, man, that was online. Let's take another look at that. 
sidearm hyzer approach downhill connecting dead on with the cage bouncing straight backwards great knowledge of his disc there perfect over stability to just hyzer in the whole way as he taps in his par almost magnificent birdie good recovery by him And Lowry taking his bogey four. Niklas will do the same. And Rasmus will tap in his three. Taking a stroke on both first and second place. Although he is still behind Henar in that third place spot. As now all of our lead card by hole three has snagged at least one bogey. Hole number four, our first par four of the round, 154 meters, have a soft left to right fade off the tee, We're really looking to flip something up, or if you're trying to get aggressive, lay down that roller and get past this wall of trees we just passed. After that, you should have a pretty easy approach shot, maybe even a jump putt for that eagle. I want to see some aggression on this in the final final round. I enjoyed Someone the roller play here. The the pure air shots were in a great place, don't get me wrong, but the rollers offered a huge, uh, a better probability of having that eagle chance. I totally agree. There's a few trees off of the tee that make the roller a little difficult. That one in particular right there on the left side. There's Rasmus. Look at this. He bombs one down the middle. Oh, but just overturns it a little bit too soon up that hill, and he hits that. I think it's. I referred to it as a chassis last round. I'm not quite sure. Okay. What it is there it looks like a car remain. It does. And we'll see. Hen it very now. well could be. This looks like your line. Get some cut angle. He is flying past the guardians. That's good stuff. He didn't get too much further than Rasmus, but he's in the clear, unobstructed, got the full roll. Yeah, really understable disc. He had a lot of cut angle on that, and it rolled over fast. Oh, Niklas, that's wide. Oh. Maybe a little bit too much air time or slightly early release there, as he, I'm sure, wanted to curl right of those trees. He will have quite a lot left to bite off, but... With a 154 meter par four, I think, and still very salvageable par for Nicholas. Yeah, par is for sure salvageable. Birdie, I don't think is going to happen. So we see Lowry now. Looking mm. like he just wants a nice little air shot to flex it through the gap. Oh, almost through the gap. Almost through, but he's got that sidearm. He can, he can stretch one out and get something up and down. And I can understand that if you're in the leader position. I think the air shot offers you a great look at the three still. And the roller might has a higher chance of not getting that birdie. As Nicholas does go for the big miraculous forehand flex. Connects with the trees. Yeah, and the one chasing you is kind of showing some weakness. I would do the same thing. Just keep it consistent. And here we are with Lowry's approach, sidearm, almost canning it. <laughs> Puts it right up there, just fades a, a, a meter early, maybe less. Yeah, a little bit long, looking to be outside the circle just a bit. But nonetheless, a birdie putt. And Is it a planter? I don't know, it looks almost like a trailer or something that just kind of sat there long enough to become <laughs> become the court of the forest as Rasmus also opting for that overstable forehand approach he gets just a meter closer than Lowry also about edge of circle this is Nicholas to put himself close to try and save a par and he comes off pretty short that'll be a tricky four for Nicholas from there uncharacteristic approach there we see Hennar just chipping it up, just giving a little toss under the basket. That's how you do this on this hole. 
does have a very casual game. Looks mm-hmm. like he's just doing his thing. Lowry for birdie. Get it. So see. nice. Yeah, that putt is just on. It's so beautiful looking. And now the pressure is on Nicholas here just to make a par. <gasps> no way. Oh, he catches a lot of chains, but weak side falls out the left. That will be a two-stroke swing between Lowry and Nicholas there with a bogey and a birdie, respectively. In the tight race just got a little cushion. Great putt by Rasmus oh, to secure wow. his birdie. And he'll be back to even. Keeping the pressure on. But I believe Hennard. Also for birdie here. This should be, yeah, this is a birdie. And he is also putting himself back to even for the round yeah. with that one. Hennard went back to par. All right. <laughs> Hole number five, par three, 108 meters. Got two gaps to think about here. Going either left gap, get you clean to the basket, or you go the right gap, which is a little bit safer, but you got a lot of gambling to go through with all these trees scattered around. Seeing some sidearm flex shots, really flippy backhand mid ranges. Get yourself up onto this hill, you can really just slam the disc into the hill once you make the gap. But not an easy birdie to speak of. Absolutely not. Tons of guardian trees and a very specific shape. We'll see Rasmus here, quite a strong forehand game. We'll see if he can manage that flex through the gap. A lot of Anheuser out of the hand, and yeah. as a result, just gets a little bit nose down into the ground. But hit the gap. Yeah, too low out of the hand, but like you said, he made the gap. And and you can run it with that sloped green, the hill right behind. There's no reason not to give it a bid. Oh, that would be an awesome two. So we see Hennar now. Flipping one up, left gap, but too high, catching the ceiling. Oh, what? I think a triple, Wait. double, triple skip. Um, he got kicked left. Hit a tree left, got kicked back out right, and then maybe a third ricochet. Camera one to camera two switch threw me completely off. That that didn't look good out of camera one, but camera two said something completely different. That I, th- was, I think he's in the circle. He's in the circle putting for birdie. We see Lowry now trying to flex that forehand as well. Ooh. So close to good. He just beat, couldn't beat the last tree in his way there. Mr. Super clean off the sidearm, but just not clean enough. Let's see if Niklas can get one back here. Eyes are flipping. Looking clean. In What's the it? circle. And that's just a straight shot. That didn't look like it had any turnover. That's just a hyzer flip up to straight. I will agree. That actually looked like right side gap through the left side second gap. Didn't see that line before. Oh, you see, nasty little roll away for Lowry there. Surprised he didn't give it more height up the hill, but Rasmus doing the same. Yeah. Maybe they're afraid of the roll away even more severely uh, with the steps and the sharp angle. You really would have to land the disc with the nose up as you approached to the basket here, or you would risk roll away. But I don't know, leaving it at the bottom of the hill, that's quite a tester still. Because you could still roll down as yeah, I mean, Hennar misses his birdie putt. I think got a little bit of ground play, but not too much. We'll see this putt from the bottom of the hill now. Not an easy one. For the lone birdie. Oh, just off the right side cage. I gotta say, that was a sick camera angle. It really From was. up on the hill, it really showed the uh, altitude these guys are putting up. Kudos. Yeah, I do like this. This is giving you the oh, idea. Yeah. What a solid par save from Lowry. It's it's hard to show inclines and declines well on camera, I think. You always uh, underestimate it on coverage, and then when you get there, it's, oh, this is, mm-hmm. this is a steep hill. Biggest thing I watch is how many steps it takes them to actually get up there. <laughs> You count the beads of sweat dripping off yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. How much effort do they need to put into each step? 
is Henar for his par. Beautiful. Good putt to salvage that after. He, did, he had a good birdie look, to be fair, but nice for him to save that par. Still a bit of work left from the knee there. Yeah. It was a nice little break off the tee, catching some branches on the ceiling, getting in the circle still, but hey, par is all good. No damage done. Niklas dropping himself in for par. Lowry as well, taking that par with Henar. And Rasmus with the bogey. No birdies on Tricky Hole 5. Let's take a look. This is hole number six, I believe. Par four, 182 meters. Got this tight gap off the tee, about 40 meters from the tee. These guys are gonna look to shoot something out real hard, real high up in the air, get past all these trees on the left, and then let the disc fade, fade, fade not too far you will catch yourself into some rough on the outside right of the green of the fairway sorry land yourself in the middle here in the cut grass have just that one grouping of trees afterwards to approach around this could be eagled it has been done i believe in 2019 kevin jones did it is it the same throw off the tee, or are they I believe so, going for yeah. something more direct? I'm pretty positive this is the same hole. With final round, strokes to be made up. Let's see if someone gets crazy.
Goal 7, par 3, 109 meters, uphill tee shot with a low ceiling, mid fairway. After that, you're heading downhill. Shots here are going to be just beelines as low to the ground as possible. Backhand righty is going to try to flip something up, keep it straight, straight, straight. Try not to fade left as you head down the hill. And you really. mentioned quickly on hole six some eagles. Very quick shout out to Lauri Hemelainen and Samuel Henninen. They both took eagles on hole six. Hole number eight, another par four, 156 meters. 
backhand righty, whatever. Miss that first tree on the right. <laughs> After that, you're gonna start filtering left, hit through this secondary gap here, start heading down the hill slope, landing somewhere in this area, setting up for a nice second shot. Yeah, probably a stable, overstable mid, break through the last gap of trees, got that uphill slope behind the basket, really can take a nice run at it with the second shot. I want to see some aggression, boys.
Let's finish it off with another par four. Hole nine, 150 meters. Got about 80 meter tunnel shot off the tee. Tough placement to land though. Really gotta either push the envelope, try to get as far down the fairway as you can, or if you've got that nice nestled 80 meter drive, land it at the corner. Get yourself set up for this downhill approach. Backhand ante, sidearm hyzer, take your pick. Not too much trouble to deal with on this hole besides getting it through the trees. You need to get this birdie. Give yourself some confidence to finish that final nine.
Thank you guys again for sticking with us, hanging in for this nice, amazing battle. We're taking a look at our card. We got Niklas leading it off at 22 under, Lowry and Henar minus 20, Rasmus 17 under par, just a few behind, still got nine to go. And a few bogeys, we'll see what the field has to say about that. Yes, a Niemannen. Four under, matching Nicholas through the front nine. He is also 20 under, tied for second place. What about Lowry Hamalainen? Eight oh, down. I did not see that. That is, that is Mr. Eagle boy. himself. Great job, guys. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment to support European disc golf coverage. And we will catch you on the back nine.